Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop, uh, which you probably already see here, is called Kingdom Rush Rift in Time. Kingdom Rush Rift in Time is for one to four players and it is a tower defense slash, I would say Tetris attacks style game. And what do I mean that by that? Well, I mean, similar to other games Lucky Duck has recently produced, you'll be using these little Tetris pieces to basically be placing them on boards with minions and trying to remove all those minions from the board by covering them. If you can do that, you'll be removing the different minion spaces on the board. And of course, they'll come in waves and they'll move around. You'll have heroes in addition to their powers and your own unique towers that you can upgrade and whatnot. So it has that tower defense feel to it, it has the theme to it, and then it throws in this little interesting Tetris aspect as well to it. Most of you guys have probably already watched some of the videos out there on the Kickstarter, which is currently going on, I believe now, even though it's technically not going on now because this is in the past but by the time we get this finished it will be on kickstarter and there's probably going to be a ton of people showing you how to play the game like rotto and all them so i'm not going to go ahead and do that i'm going to explain the game very basically very simply as to what you're going to get in the game and how it functions and then i'm going to give you my review of the game so you'll get an idea of what i think of it and who i think will be best interested in a game kingdom rush the rift in time i'm a huge fan of the mobile app of kingdom rush me and the friends that played with me as well as Fred and the cardboard stack are all playing the game and the app and I'll be introducing footage to show you how the game functions with uh, in, in comparison to the app but anyway let's go uh, do the open shot here I'll show you what's included in the game then I will get closer up give you an idea of what it does and what you can do with it and then review time all right let's do it so here we have Kingdom Rush the board game and pretty much everything that's included as far as the prototype copy goes. I'm sure with your copy there's going to be additional scenarios and who knows what other goodies. I imagine this game's going to do very well, which I'll explain more in the review. But uh, this game here has a ton of stuff included just for what I have. You have the four different characters, their activation cards, their special abilities, their basic attacks, how to play the turn sequence and your starting towers depending on the number of players. You're gonna have these cards that will explain how these bad guys work as well as different scenarios which indicates the type of bad guys you'll be dealing with which wave types how many points you get for destroying them so on and so forth there's also these see-through the tower location spaces that we place on the board depending on the different scenarios how you can place this board this is actually a made-up scenario i just kind of put together just to give you an idea of what the game's going to be like i'm actually not going to give this full run through or whatever because there's so many other channels that are going to be doing that so i won't really need to you can go ahead and watch one of those other great content creators over here are all the different uh, towers you're going to have the militia bombardment towers mage towers and archer towers just like in the video game and of course they upgrade uh, Mil militia goes footman knights and holy order and so on and so forth for all the rest of them but what's the most important aspect about them is that all the different towers will have different things they can do. That one is going to drop two dudes on the board in a space, that one will drop, uh, that one drops one, that one drops two, this one drops three, and this one over here drops four. There's also a, a specific amount of these towers that you can have. For instance, that there's only one four you can have at any time throughout the game. Uh, these bombardment towers have two, two, then three, then four. How you place them on the board matters because it's going to be based on how you can place them on the enemy tiles. And your objective is to simply take these tiles here and place them down on uh, locations that have enemies, trying to cover as many enemies as possible. Sometimes you can get away with all of them, sometimes you can't, so it's really a Tetris feel to the game, right? As well as the different towers are going to let you have the opportunity to either never uh, never be able to actually rotate these, and some of them will let you rotate them depending on how advanced the towers are, and your characters will be able to unlock special abilities at the cost of coins, or I should say gems, depending on when you beat monsters, they'll give you gems here, and you'll be able to use abilities, but once you use them, you're going to have to put them back down again until you can use them again. They give you special things that can help you. Characters have movement and they also have strength or uh, health associated over here and you'll be utilizing your characters to actually stomp on monster boards as well as maybe attack them from ranged or attack them in melee based on their specific attacks there. Uh, you get all these different tiles here that will make up different boards in the game and I imagine the finished copy is going to have a ton more than this but nevertheless that's basically what you get in the game Kingdom Rush Rift in Time and I keep forgetting that last little phrase at the bottom. Let me go ahead and show you down below how a turn kind of works and then we'll come up and I'll give my review. Okay, so here's a close-up of the game and basically how we're going to be setting it up for just now to give you an idea of what's how to play. But for the most part, people are going to start with specific towers. Let's start with the mage tower with the mage guy, which may or may not be true. But uh, you're going to basically be playing cards and hero cards to begin the game. And it's going to have your certain setup here where the minions are going to be certain areas, as well as where you can place your towers based on the color of these cards here. So for instance, uh, this guy here is going to be green 
which will indicate it by this thing here, why not? And you can only play on green towers, and it tells you which colors can play on what, even though I think they're technically color corded, but you, you get the idea. So uh, he can go ahead and play, and what he can do is he can play his towers on the green spaces, because that's the color he is. And when you play, it's going to be based on the direction. So in this case here, that one must be placed exactly like that in that way. So like that, it cannot be placed like this and it cannot be placed like this. It has to follow the exact orientation based on the arrows. So we'll do this. If you played somewhere else where there are no dudes, it's not gonna help at all. So you wanna make sure to play your cards in order to do damage to certain things. Um, if he doesn't want to do that by playing cards, he can pass this along to the next player in which they'd put it in the received tower area. The beginning uh, of the end of the step, you'll be able to upgrade these cards to get better cards because they weren't played. Basically, you're allowing yourselves to upgrade them. But uh, for the most part, people are going to be playing these cards uh, lay later in the game and probably upgrading earlier. It just depends on your strategy, though. You've got your special abilities that you can use when you spend of these specific gems here that you gain from killing the monsters. And the way you kill monsters is by covering the entire board up, as you can see. Players can also play their heroes on their hero area in order to activate their hero. And based on where the hero is, how many spaces he can move, this guy can move two, and he can move diagonally, you can go one, and you can go two spaces, landing on these specific bad guys here, which helps, but if you land on them and they eventually move, you'll have to be, you can be damaged and all that kind of stuff, so you gotta be careful how you want to place your heroes, and of course you can also activate their basic attack abilities, thusly removing, take, or taking more damage, and of course this one has little arrows, which means you can turn it any way you want, so heroes will be able to do certain things like that, um, and after you've placed your cards down, everybody else will do the same thing, and then you're going to destroy any horde trays that are fully covered, and then it finally advance any horde trays that are on the board. Spawn a new horde tray, so you'll get a new horde card. And based on the locations that are indicated by little little uh, entryway markers, you'll be able to put new ones down and new bad guys will form. And being they'll, they'll also eventually be moving across this board here. Now, there's different types of bad guys. you got guys that can only be killed certain ways, guys that heal, uh, guys that are flying... Let me see where all these guys are. Some of oh, this one can't be damaged by magic. And it has actually this little nice example here. It says Dead Eye. If there are any visible uh, Dead Eye icons on any horde tray, after it moves, deal one damage to each hero on this tray and any adjacent spaces. So, for instance, these guys here, they can hurt. They're, they're archers. They can hurt heroes. If, they, if this was here, it could hurt this guy when they go to move. Um, and there's also these guys here which have double speed, but double movement speed. They can actually move the, move twice as opposed to once when advancing. So all the different hero, all the different bad guys have different things that affect them on the trace. And you want to cover up those specific bad guys in order for their abilities to not be utilized. Specifically the double movement ones, because those are very, very powerful. Um, after that, you will upgrade your received tower. So for instance, I had a mage tower here. I would upgrade it into an adept tower that I can use later on the next round. Then I'm going to uh, pick up any tower cards that are on the board, oh, uh, putting them into my hand. And uh, finally, you're going to buy tower cards and hero abilities. Heroes have specific abilities on their board. When you flip them over for paying for them with your little coins here, you're going to be able to utilize these powers. They'll do some certain special things. Some of them are I'd say better than others, in my opinion, but maybe not. They're all just different in their own way. And, of course, you can buy these towers for certain costs. You can't buy the bigger ones because you'll have to upgrade them. But I think you get the idea of placing them on this board here. The paying number of players is what types of these things go down, and the ability to play more or less towers, giving everybody a chance to move their character around, as well as playing the towers. Sometimes you won't have them because you're going to be passing these guys to, uh, to upgrade them, and sometimes you'll have quite a few of them because players will need to continue to pass them until they get to that fourth stage, making them very powerful. All of these work as you would assume they work. Some of them have unique aspects to them, like this one here. When it attacks, it can attack with this, this either straight or diagonally, which is pretty cool. Other ones will be able to attack the far sides, and then some of them will be able to allow you to rotate them. So if you play this like this, it allows you to rotate these two sides here to be making them go horizontally or vertically. Finally, then you have this one here, which is interesting as well. For instance, if I played this here, I had my four dudes on, I'd actually be able to place them on, and if it covered the tower, that would destroy them. However, this prevents movement. Now, if they can move twice, it just prevents one of those movement. You have to cover up the ones that move double. But it also does damage, provided that it covers them all up. If not, they end up returning. So it's a good way of slowing down the bad guys in the game. But that's 
that's pretty much how those work. The waves get more complex, the abilities are all different, and they have unique hero abilities that do different things, as well as a really cool one over here, which is the, the Call of the Wild, which will allow you to uh, summon a little kitty cat that's going to move around the board and uh, hit things as well. Eventually, this is going to get super crazy, and you have to deal with bosses and whatnot, but I think that's pretty much the game. Uh, you can go ahead and for, for more for de full detail on the Kickstarter campaign, and they'll tell you how to play exactly fully on, but this is good enough for you guys to get an idea of how it works. What do I think about it now? Let's go. So a couple caveats to the game Kingdom Rush, Rift in Time. First of all, how do you win? Well, depending on the scenario, there's gonna be monsters and eventually if you defeat them all without them all getting through the borders based on the number of health you have, if every monster that gets crossed, you're gonna be losing health and you will lose if you run out of health. And if you can defeat all of those waves before you run out of health, you'll win. And based on how well you do is whether you're gonna get some more bonus victory coins to go to the next scenario, multiple scenarios. I have three here, so there's probably gonna be a lot more you guys will get and i'm sure you could also probably make up your own scenario if you wanted to i don't see why you couldn't make it even more extra more extra extra challenging uh this game is excellent the quality of the components is amazing just for the prototype itself the amount of thought put into the game is excellent as well the artwork is exactly what i would think for a kingdom rush game i love the app game for kingdom rush and it does an excellent job of showing this game off in that way especially since you can't recreate a tower defense exactly as you would like to based on a video game you have to kind of uh, configure how you want to do damage. And damage is probably the most important thing in these games. I've had two tower defense games that I've really enjoyed. Uh, one of them, the last one being Defense Grid, that plays very, very, very similar to the, the board game, the video game Defense Grid. This one here is interesting because damage is actually done by the trays and by the markers. So it reminds me of the game Tetris. And I'm a big fan of Tetris, and most of you guys probably are as well. At least the idea of it. And in a board game, it works really well. It reminds me of their previous game, Jetpack Joyride, but instead of a dexterity game, now it comes down to strategy and placement as to how you want to work together to place these Tetris pieces to do the most damage possible on each tray. There's a lot of working together in this game, and you could totally play this all by yourself if you wanted, using all the characters, or however you want to do it, with, or play with up to four. Uh, realistically, this is more of a solitaire game, so that has a possibility of an alpha gamer jumping in and saying, you gotta do this, or you can't do that. Uh, you can kind of get around that by everybody only being able to do what, on their, their turn what they want to do by nobody else speaking which is probably what I recommend for this specific title, but everything else is really, really good. Being able to move the different towers around is fun and upgrading and all that is good. Some people might complain, I suppose, where you can't play your tower because you need to have an upgrade or somebody's going to be like, you need to upgrade that tower. You can't play that one. And so they'll have to pass it along and they won't have any towers available to them until the next one comes around to them, which I guess can get kind of irritating. But eventually when you get towers, they're all going to be very strong because everybody's working together to upgrade them. If you don't mind cooperative games, you're going to really, really enjoy this game. If you like the tower defense aspect of the game, as long as you don't mind the non-damaging, the, the new damaging way they're, they're doing this game, which is the Tetris thing, you're going to dig this game as well. Personally, I really, really like the damage in this game. This is probably my favorite way of doing damage on a tower defense game. This is one of my favorite tower defense games now. I think Defense Grid is probably a little more for me specifically because it gives me that, that StarCraft, WarCraft, user map setting style of a tower defense. But this one here is more of a puzzle-based game where my wife is definitely going to enjoy this more. Grant is going to enjoy this more. My cameraman and my wife, they, they would really, really dig this game. We played actually played this once in Arizona Game Fair with my wife, and she really liked this game because of the way you're going to be strategizing and placing these pieces down, saying, oh, do this, or, oh, you know, that's a better idea, you know, working together to get these things done. The scenarios change the way the game is played, the ability to move the pieces around or not move them down. It's going to cause all these havoc, all this havoc. It's challenging. The game's challenging. Even the first scenario, you can probably lose. It's not as likely that you're going to lose the first scenario, but as it goes on, the scarier Rift guys come out, and they get really hard to deal with. There's a lot of rules based on what you can and cannot place based on these things here. Uh, overall, excellent. It's a fun game. I just wanted to give you guys a full understanding of what you're getting into for this game. So expect the scenario modes and expect to be able to move your characters around which is my personal favorite aspect of the game, I think, next to the attacking mechanism, is being able to stomp on the platforms with your character and slam them and doing all these abilities and whatnot. It really breathes a lot of life into the game. If you like the mobile app game, this is definitely a purchase for you, as long as you've got two or three extra friends to play with, or if you're a solo gamer, I highly suggest Kingdom Rush Rift in Time. I forgot it again. <sighs>